speaker. He was directing a bunch of enthusiastic 10-year-olds in the erection of a quarter-scale timber frame barn inside the Pittsfield branch of the AABM. He's an architect here in Ann Arbor who has the unusual specialty of converting old barns into houses and other buildings. Please welcome Chuck Bolton. About 15 years ago, I was asked if I could design a house using an old barn. You heard that right. Put an old barn inside. <coughs> the idea was kind of simple. The idea is to find an old barn, take it apart, clean it up, stand it back, and use it to build the house around it. So when you're done, you can see the entire barn on the inside. Um, it seemed like a very cool idea to me, and certainly it was challenging. Um, so I, I agreed to do that. But the barn that we were using, I mean, barns can be very nice, as this one is, but the barn that we were using didn't quite look like this. <clears throat> it looked more like what you see here. Um, this is what a barn looks like when somebody doesn't want it anymore. So, but you've got to keep in mind that I have been trained that if someone comes to me and asks to put a 200-year-old barn inside their house, I've been trained that the right answer is no. I'm supposed to say no because that barn is old and warped. I'm supposed to say no because that barn is rotten, and I'm supposed to say no because that barn is filthy. But really, the biggest thing is that my whole industry, the construction industry, is designed, um, is based on the, all kinds of testing of materials and um, engineering, where all of those materials are tested so that, and I can't be using these kinds of materials in the building. Nevertheless, I said yes. I said yes because I wanted the, the challenge. And I said yes because I thought it could be very exciting. But I really didn't know all the issues that were in front of me. I didn't know how much of that was really in there. Um, but it turns out that after you spend a good bit of time and you scrub the crap out of the barn, literally, and you fix the broken parts and you fix the rot, that they clean up really wonderfully. And the resultant spaces are really quite impressive. Um, and then if you take a little bit of planning and time and carefulness, you actually can find a way to get kitchens in there. You can find a way to put bathrooms in there, and offices and dens, and all the things we need to use these things again. And then the barn gets a new life, a life that can be another 50 or 100 years old, much better than letting them just fall apart. And if you're respectful and a little bit careful and clever, you can actually have some fun in there. The carpenters weren't completely fond of building that curve, but it came out really nice. Um, so after a couple of years of sort of honing my skills working with barns and having a few successful projects. I was asked if I would uh, interview for another barn project. And I had to travel for this interview. So I, I went for an afternoon interview, and there was another architect who interviewed in the morning. Um, and the project was to use a barn to replace this house and to take much better advantages of the views of the site, because the, it was really underutilized. Well, after the interviews, the four of us went out to dinner. That would be with the other architect. Um, it was a terribly awkward meal. Um, but at one point, Mr. Client leaves over and he says, you know, Mrs. Client and I really like what you both have to offer. And we wondered if we could work on this project together. <laughs> together. We had never met. <laughs> so, what followed was a long silence. And then an even longer moment. And it dawned on me, neither of us were saying no. So, working together with another architect on a design project, even when you don't know, there are more reasons to say no than there is to say yes. But we actually said yes and agreed to do the project. Um, now, if you've never built a house before, I can tell you that uh, it's a very emotional experience. And it's emotional even without a 200 year old barn. And it's emotional without using a whole bunch of old materials that are kind of hard to get. And it's emotional because there's always a budget. Yes, there was a budget on this project. <laughs> no, it wasn't easy to meet. Um, and then there's also all the issues with your contractors, your general, your subcontractors, your interior designers, and all their craziness. Um, but now there are also two architects. Um, so, nevertheless, we agreed to do it. We um, we pull off this, this successful project, and, um, and we were very happy that, that 
all went well. Um, agreeing to do something you've never done before is really kind of a chore. Um, agreeing to do something that doesn't have a safety net is um, hard, but it can lead to some really rich and rewarding experiences. It's kind of like coming here and talking before you tonight. Thank you very much.